Welcome to the Serious Shift Blogcast. We have only one question. What does Serious Shift mean to you? To answer that and much more, here's your host, Dennis Mosley-Williams. I am Dennis. Welcome back once again to the Serious Shift Blogcast, episode 75. I remember when people said you'll never make it to 74. <laughs> Um, we are closing out today the series on blogs, uh, the series of blogs on getting better. Today we're doing steps 13, 14, 15. Please see previous blogs if you uh, are just not yet up to speed. Um, my question for today is, are you working on your business or in it? So, you know, I've just shared now up to 13 little strategies for you. Are you applying them? And if not, why not? Okay, so let's get right into this. 13, 14, 15. Number 13, get yourself an accelerator. Okay. If you're new, the accelerator is what I refer to as my office. (laughs) Okay. I never call it the office. The office, an office, it has been my direct experience, is the place you go when you want to solve other people's problems, not when you want to get creative. Okay. Offices are noisy social places. The accelerator, my accelerator is similar to the TARDIS from Doctor Who, you know, the telephone booth he moves around in, the accelerator can appear anywhere in time and space, providing three essential criteria, three rules, if you will, are met. Here they are. Number one, it must have access to state-of-the-art technology, non-negotiable. Number two, it has to be comfortable, heated and air-conditioned. I've added a stand-up desk, a really good office chair, Herman Miller, and I tell you that specifically so you don't get faked out. Don't buy a chair that looks good. Chairs aren't for lounging. You're not King Arthur in the round table here. It's a purpose-built chair to help you maintain your posture so you can keep your body on your side when you're focusing on your creativity during the day. Stand-up desk, great chair. Kill your overhead lighting. Get some task lights. It's better. Don't let the place get messy. Your workspace should inspire you and tie it to everything else in your life when you're in there. Your diet, what you're doing, okay? Everything. Accelerate in or at the accelerator. Today I'm in my dining room. It works for the kind of work I'm doing today. And it works lots of times because lots of times rule number three is met. I can focus. It's got a door. No, When nobody's here, I can work here. But um, next spring I'm building a new accelerator in my backyard. Okay, number 14. Eat less. I'm, I'm not going to tell you anything you've already heard 10,000 times, okay? Um, go hire a nutritionist. You know this, and I know this. The worse fuel you put in your body, the your brain doesn't work as well. So I'm not going to make this a lecture about eating less. I'm going to make this a lecture about drinking more water. <laughs> okay, so in December, it is presently October, last December... I made a New Year's resolution, which was to drink more water. So look, I'm sharing this little bonus, little, a little customer secret, customer surprise, as we say in the experience economy. I am sharing this as a little bonus tip, okay? Slipping it in here under number 14. So last year, I set this um, per little goal, which was to drink more water, believing if I just make this little adjustment, it's going to make a huge improvement in my life. And it does. So just like these 15 rules, this was another one. So here was the game I played. Anytime I went anywhere and anybody offered me a drink, would you like a coffee? Would you like a drink? I'd say yes. And I'd ask for a glass of water. The second rule was that anytime anybody handed me a glass of water, I had to drink it completely. I'm obsessive about it. My children know about it. My daughter Mia loves to get the waitress to ask, she'll say to the waitress when they're presenting the, the bill, Mia will say, ask him if he wants a drink of water. Because rule number three was anytime anybody offers me a drink of water, okay, I have to say yes. And then rule number two is I have to drink it all. So sometimes when I'm, by the time I'm getting the bill, my daughter's trying to drown me. I've had like four <laughs> glasses of water. She loves to do it to me, but I do it. I request the water and I drink it all. Okay, so eat less, go get a nutritionist. And if you're thinking, well, my problem isn't that I don't know, you know, what I should eat. It's that I'm a stress eater. Well, that's not an answer. That's a bigger problem, kiddo. Come on now. Oh, no. <laughs> and I mean this nicely. No, no, I'm a stress eater because I'm crazy. Oh, okay. Well, then let's ignore it. If you are a stress eater because you're stressed at work and your business isn't going well, come on. There's all kinds of people. I know a couple of guys in Canada that can help you out. And I know a whole bunch of other people everywhere else that can help you out, too. 
ask for help. That was one of these tips. I can't remember which number because they're all so brilliant. Let's go. To, so number 14, eat less, drink more water. Number 15. Oh, when I read this one, it hit me right in the feelers. Number 15 is family. And I wrote it probably about a year after my father had died. And I wrote something in particular. What I wrote was I said, um, my dad died. For the most part, I'm at peace with all of it. But what still hits home isn't so much that he's dead. And he is still dead. It's that I'll never talk to him again. One day I will not have spoken to my dad in decades. My kids are growing up fast and somehow I'm turning 43. Wow. Well, I just turned 48 in the summer. Family reminds you who you are and where you came from, but also who you can be and where you're going. Whew. Family. You know, we all say my family's my legacy, but it's not. It's what your family says about you when you're dead that's your legacy. <laughs> Get focused on the right goal there, my friends. Here's number 16. It says, I've discovered a new band called Hey Rosetta. This was in 2014. They're from St. John's, Newfoundland, and I'm pretty late to the party, but I'm not as late as you. Enjoy this and see what else they might have for you. The band's called Hey Rosetta. They're fantastic. Everybody, it doesn't take a home run to win the game. It doesn't take luck to turn your fortunes around. It just takes a little bit of common sense and practical application, okay? This, this thing you want, happiness, more control, freedom, etc., it's not impossible. And, and until you've achieved it, you'll just have to take me you know, on my word. It's not nearly as complicated as you think it is. Conversely, it's not as easy as you're hoping it's going to be, but it's definitely not as hard as you think it is either. These are 15 serious shifts, just 15 little rules that you can incorporate into your life. It's going to make a big difference for you. And if your problems are bigger than that, why don't you just drop us a line, okay? And we'll tell you what to do, who to talk to, what to do next, what to think about, questions to ask yourself, how to frame this problem, reach out. We're loving, beautiful people. As always, thank you so much for your attention. We hope you're well, and I appreciate your time today. Take care. I'll see you again, okay? Cheers. We hope you enjoyed the Serious Shift broadcast. We would love any suggestions, feedback on topics, ideas, or challenges that may have you feeling stuck. Also, please leave a five-star review wherever you are enjoying this content. It helps Dennis out tremendously. On behalf of Dennis and the team, see you next episode.